This is a car built in 15 seconds, not by rushing, but by perfecting every step until speed becomes a natural outcome of precision. That production ramp will take time to reach an annual rate of 1 million units because everything will move only as quickly as the slowest, least efficient, and least fortunate part out of more than 10,000 individual components. This means Tesla's Model 2 line has already begun operating piece by piece, and the company is now discovering which part, which section, and which process will be the first to fail under true operating pressure. What is happening right now is an ongoing stress test of the company's boldest low-cost platform ever created, a production system designed to expose its own weak points before anyone outside the company even realizes the line is active. And today we will break down the technical specifications, cross-check supplier tooling activity, and identify three very specific production capabilities in the Tesla Model 2 manufacturing system that explain why Elon Musk said what he did during the quarter 3 earnings call. If you enjoy these rare factory floor deep dives before anyone else publishes them, make sure to subscribe right now. Tap the button, join us, and help us push toward exactly 235,979 subscribers. Your support keeps this level of research alive. And if you are watching this while working on something else, just say, Auto Intel, keep them coming, and hit subscribe. Even one click makes a difference. The first question is how structural battery enclosure molding removes $2,400 in cost that competitors cannot avoid. Traditional electric vehicle battery packaging uses a stacked system. Individual cells are placed into modules held by aluminum frames. Those modules are then installed into trays with steel reinforcement. After that, the trays are bolted to a separate structural floor assembly. Every added layer increases weight, cost, and assembly difficulty. Tesla's molded structural battery enclosure collapses all of this into a single part that performs three jobs at the same time. It is the battery housing, it is the vehicle's floor structure, and it is the crash energy absorber. The key breakthrough is that the carbon fiber material is not woven cloth that requires slow hand layering or expensive autoclave curing. It is chopped fiber blended with a high-temperature thermoplastic that can be injection molded in a process much closer to regular plastic molding than to traditional composite manufacturing. The cycle time is around 340 seconds, which is fast enough for high-volume car manufacturing but slow enough that the material still reaches about 94% of the strength of aerospace-grade carbon fiber at roughly one-eighth of the cost. And when you look at the cost numbers, the advantage becomes clear. A traditional steel tray plus an aluminum cooling plate costs about $840 in raw materials and $380 in labor. The molded carbon fiber enclosure costs roughly $490 in materials and $95 in labor because it is a single automated placement operation with almost no human intervention. That is a saving of $1,535 per vehicle. But the secondary savings increase that amount even more. The molded enclosure weighs 67 pounds compared to 128 pounds for the traditional design. That 61 pound reduction allows Tesla to install a smaller battery pack while still getting a 250 mile driving range, saving another $870 in battery cell cost. Put it all together and the total advantage is around $2,400 compared to normal construction methods. But it gets even more interesting when you look at hot climate performance. For buyers in places like Texas, Arizona, and Southern California, the thermoplastic matrix has more than 340% better thermal conductivity than the epoxy resins used in classic carbon fiber structures. This means the battery enclosure acts almost like a giant heat sink that draws heat away from the cells about 3.4 times faster than aluminum under 105 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperatures during long highway travel. That brings battery temperatures down by roughly 22 degrees Fahrenheit compared to what most liquid-cooled battery systems can maintain. Lower temperatures mean less battery wear. Tesla's accelerated aging tests show around 91% capacity left at 150,000 miles in hot climates versus about 84-86% to for traditionally cooled battery packs. If you live in Florida or Texas and you plan to keep your car for 10 years, this difference is huge. 
It is the difference between a real-world range of about 227 miles and around 210 miles at the 10-year mark. That is the difference between a car that still works for your daily schedule and one that no longer fits your needs. This molded enclosure also alters crash behavior in ways that insurance companies are already paying attention to. Carbon fiber composite absorbs impact force by fracturing its fibers bit by bit instead of bending like metal does. In offset crash tests at 40 miles per hour, the molded floor structure absorbs 34% more energy before reaching the passenger space compared to steel construction. Data from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety suggests this could mean 12 to 16% lower risk of severe injury in similar collisions. State Farm and Progressive have already submitted insurance pricing for 2025 that places the Model 2 in insurance groups usually reserved for mid-size sedans, not compact cars. That changes yearly premiums for buyers, cutting about $240 to $320 in expensive states like New York and Florida. The manufacturing process even allows Tesla to adjust material specifications for different regions. The molding system lets the factory change fiber content from 30% to 55% depending on the strength requirements for each market. For northern states where road salt eats metal parts, Tesla can raise fiber content in the lower areas of the floor for better long-term durability. In southern regions with high ultraviolet exposure, the fiber can be treated differently. This happens automatically based on the delivery location without needing separate production lines or complex inventory setups. Which advantage matters most to you? There are three big ones. If heat control and slow battery were matter most, comment battery. If crash strength and lower insurance cost matter most, comment safety. If long-term durability in your climate is the priority, comment durability. The battery enclosure solves packaging and cost problems, but the next part of the system, the propulsion motor design, shows an even more aggressive approach to cost control. Every Tesla sold today and almost every electric vehicle from any brand uses an internal rotor motor. The spinning magnetic part is inside while the outer housing stays still. The Model 2 turns this idea around completely. The rotor is on the outside, spinning around a quiet inner core. It sounds like a small difference, but its effect on manufacturing, performance, and service life is massive. Internal rotor motors need complex bearing systems to support the central shaft under high load. These bearings must be lubricated continuously, sealed to prevent contamination, and checked regularly. They are the most common failure point. Across the electric vehicle industry, Bearing wear causes 67% of electric motor service needs within the first 120,000 miles. External rotor motors eliminate that central shaft entirely. The rotor attaches straight to the wheel hub through a simple flange. There are no special bearings, only the wheel bearing that already exists and already must meet tight standards. This cuts parts count by 23 items and reduces manufacturing cost by around $340 per motor. More importantly, when components wear out, it is the wheel bearing that needs replacement, which every mechanic already knows how to replace. No special electric vehicle training or proprietary tools are required. But the torque difference is what drivers will feel the most. External rotor motors put the magnetic material farther from the center, creating a stronger torque arm. The Model 2 generates about 122 pound-feet of torque at 60 kilowatts each, which is around 17% more torque than internal rotor motors of similar output. For drivers who regularly climb steep hills in California coastal areas or mountain regions in New York, this means keeping highway speed on long climbs without the power drop that many compact electric vehicles suffer from. The Model 2 holds 75 miles per hour on 7% grades where competing cars drop to about 62 miles per hour. This is the difference between keeping up with traffic and becoming the slow car everyone has to pass. The external rotor layout also boosts regenerative braking strength. Because the rotor has more rotational inertia, it can absorb braking force more evenly without causing the jerky feel that comes from torque ripple. Tesla calibrates the system to reach about 0.35 times the acceleration of gravity in deceleration using only regeneration before the brake pads are used at all. For city driving, this means you might rarely touch the brake pedal. 
Real-world testing suggests brake pad life could exceed 180,000 miles compared to about 40,000 to 60,000 miles for regular cars and about 80,000 to 100,000 miles for other electric vehicles. Over 10 years of ownership, this saves a typical driver more than $1,200 in brake service. There is also a thermal advantage that works together with the structural battery enclosure's heat management. External rotor motors lose heat outward through the spinning outer shell directly into moving air instead of trapping heat inside a closed cylinder. Combined with the superior heat conductivity of the molded battery enclosure, the entire system runs around 19 degrees Fahrenheit cooler during long high-power driving. This matters for drivers who take 200-mile or longer road trips in hot conditions. Many electric vehicles reduce power by 15 to 20 percent after about 90 minutes of highway driving due to thermal limits. The Model 2 maintains full power for the whole trip. The manufacturing simplicity also allows Tesla to scale suppliers more easily. External rotor motors need less specialized equipment, so more companies can make them. Tesla already has four suppliers preparing to deliver these motors by quarter three of 2025, instead of the typical single supplier situation that causes supply problems. For buyers in states like Texas and Florida, where Tesla's service network is still expanding, this redundancy improves parts availability and reduces repair waiting time. The motor architecture cuts recurring costs, but the battery cell cooling strategy creates an even larger long-term advantage. Most electric vehicle batteries cool indirectly. Liquid moves through channels in the module or pack, and heat flows from the cell to the cooling system through thermal interface material. This works, but it is slow and structurally complicated. The Model 2 removes this entirely by using direct cooling where the cooling fluid touches the outside of each cell directly. The main reason this matters is development time. Thermal interface materials must be tested heavily to ensure that they do not break down, do not cause electrical issues, and keep performance across temperature cycles from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 years. This testing takes 22 to 26 months. Direct cooling removes this entire requirement because there is no thermal interface material. Tesla only needs to test how the coolant interacts with the cell casing. That reduces the timeline to 9 months. Tesla began this process in January 2024. Competitors still working with thermal interface materials will not finish validation until early 2026 even if they began right now. That creates an 18-month timeline advantage that cannot be erased. But the real-world advantage is even stronger. Direct cooling transfers heat around 2.8 times faster than the best thermal interface materials during fast charging. This means the battery can take 150 kilowatts of charging power continuously without lowering the power level. Other electric vehicles reduce charging power to 90 or 100 kilowatts after about 20 minutes. On a drive from New York to Florida, this changes your charging stops from 5 stops of about 25 minutes each to 3 stops of around 18 minutes each. That saves roughly 79 minutes on an 1100-mile trip. The direct cooling system also removes most of the problems of winter charging. It can heat cells from negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit to optimal charging temperature in about 8 and a half minutes by using waste heat from the motors. Other electric vehicles often need around 28 minutes. For people living in colder northern states, this means winter charging weights change from go inside for coffee to barely enough time to plug in. Direct cooling also changes service costs. Because each cell is cooled individually, a single cell failure no longer destroys an entire module. Tesla's design lets technicians replace a single cell in about 45 minutes. A module replacement today takes between 4 and 6 hours and costs around $2,400 to $3,800. A single cell replacement costs around $240. Cell failure rates are small, around 0.4% annually, but over 10 years, the chance of a failure is close to 4%. The difference in service cost is massive when it does occur. This system also keeps the battery inside the ideal temperature range for more of its life, reducing wear. Degradation falls to around 0.8% per year compared to 1.4% for indirect cooling systems. 
That means 92% capacity after 10 years instead of 88%. That is the difference between a 10-year-old electric vehicle with a 230-mile real-world range and one with about 220 miles that is on the edge of becoming inconvenient. Kelly Blue Book projections link this higher retained capacity to about 11% higher resale value after 10 years, roughly $2,750 on a $25,000 purchase. Which direct cooling benefit matters most for your ownership cost? If fast charging speed and winter performance matter the most, comment charging. If the ability to repair single cells is most important, comment service. If maintaining long-term value is your priority, comment resale. For car buyers, these manufacturing breakthroughs create an opportunity arriving in roughly seven months that delivers performance beyond its price, operating costs lower than any similar gasoline or electric vehicle, and long-term economics that stay favorable for more than a decade. The production system now active makes these results a matter of engineering certainty, not marketing claims. Stay with us, because we will bring a full new series on Tesla's new electric vehicle production lines in the upcoming videos.